Hi there. Welcome to the first video in my series on the geometric distribution. So, what is a geometric distribution? Well, the best way I can describe this is by just through an example. This one here, where we've got a fair die is thrown and the number of throws it takes to throw a six is recorded. So I'm assuming that this die is a normal fair six-sided die. Now if we were to draw a probability tree diagram, it would look something like this, where on the first throw you either get a 6 or you don't. And if you get a 6, we stop. But if you didn't get a 6, you throw again and you'll either get a 6 or you won't. And if you get a 6 here, you stop and so on. So tree diagram is going to go on like this where we either throw a 6 or we don't until we eventually do. And it could be infinite, although I doubt whether it's going to go on for that long before you throw a 6. Now, if we were to put the probabilities on here, then the probability of getting a 6 would be 1 sixth. And the probability of not getting a 6, well, that has to be 5 sixths. And because events are independent of one another, the probabilities stay constant, then the probability of getting a 6 here would be 1 sixth, and this would be 5 sixths, the probability of not getting a 6. And we could carry on just filling these probabilities in. Okay, so as I say, this would carry on forever in theory, before a 6 was eventually thrown. Now if we're to work out probabilities for getting a 6 on a particular go, let's start first of all with the probability of getting a 6, say, on the first go. So we throw the die and we get a 6 on the first go with a probability of 1 6th. And if we were to look at the probability of getting a 6 on the second go, then what's got to happen is that we don't throw a 6 on the first go, so that's going to be a probability of 5 6 And then we get it on the second go, so that's going to be 5 6 times 1 6 Now this comes to 5 36 but I'm not really interested in that. I'm just interested in developing a method. And we'll eventually come to a formula. Now the probability of getting a 6 on the third go well, what's going to happen is essentially we don't get a 6 on the first and second throws, but we do on the third throw. So what we're going to have is 5 6 times 5 6 times 1 6, which is really 5 6 squared multiplied by 1 6. And if we were to keep this up, you could see then that the probability of getting a 6, say, on the fourth go, well, that's going to be three failures, that is we don't get a six, so that'll be five sixths cubed, and then we get a success, we throw a six, so that's going to be times with the probability of getting a six, which is one sixth. So you might have been able to start to see a pattern growing in this. What I want to look at now is, in general, let's say, what's the probability of getting a six on the Arth go, okay, the arth go. Well, it's got to be failure that's got to occur. It's got to occur r minus one times. Just like when it was the fourth go, notice the power here was one less than what we've got here. On the third go, the power here was one less than the three. So, probability getting six then on the arth go has got to be five sixths all to the power r minus 1. Then you get what you want, the success. In this case, it was getting a 6, and that had a probability of 1 sixth. Now, I'll be returning to this kind of idea in a moment. Now, what we've got here is an example of a geometric distribution. What do we mean by a geometric distribution? Well, it's got to have these properties. And the tree diagram that we would get with it would look something like this. What we have to have is independent trials. 
each with constant probability, P of success and Q with failure, Q being 1 minus P. And if X is the random variable, the number of trials up to and including the first success, then X is said to be distributed as a geometric distribution. So in this example, the random variable X would have been the number of trials, number of goes we had before we scored a 6. And X could have been 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Now, as for notation, when we want to say that X is distributed as a geometric distribution, we say X is distributed and we write GEO for geometric. Although at times I've seen just G written. And there's one parameter, it's P. We only need to know P because then we know what Q is. And we know the shape of the distribution. Now, you're going to be required to work out various probabilities from a geometric distribution. We've done it here. But in general, we've seen from this result here, for instance, that if we're looking for the probability that x equals r, that our first success, if you like, occurs on the rth go, then, then we're going to have failure, q, occurring r minus 1 times. And then we would multiply by the probability of success, which was p. You can see it from this example up here. That's why I did that, okay? That this power here was one less than what we've got here. So you should be familiar with that particular formula. Now, there's something else that we also should be familiar with. It's the probability of x being greater than r. And the best way I can describe it is again returning to this example up here. Let's just suppose I was looking at working out the probability of say throwing more than five times to get a six. So more than five goes, okay, to get a six. How would we work something like this out? Well, first of all, we could work out the probability that it takes six goes and add that to the probability it takes seven goes and eight goes and nine goes and so on. But remember that this can go on forever. So I wouldn't want that method. I could, however, do one minus the sum of all the probabilities up to five. So I'll do one minus and then add these probabilities up, okay? And work out what the fifth go would be as well. But that could take too long. And it's certainly not going to be practical if we were asked the probability of more than, say, 10 goes or 20 goes, whatever, okay? So there's got to be a better way of doing this. And there is. If it takes more than five goes to get a six, Let's suppose it takes six goes, okay? Then we know that we must have had five failures. If it took seven goes to first get that six, we must still have had five failures. All the time, we must have had five failures. So we can think of this probability as being equal to the probability of failure, which is five sixths, and it would have occurred always five times over. So it'd be five six to the power five. And so we can use this concept here and say the probability of x being greater than r is always going to be equal to q to the power r. And this is an awkward idea. I still find it hard to kind of get my head around it. But you definitely need to be aware of that particular rule, as we'll see later in further tutorials. I've also got a video further on in this series where I prove this mathematically to you, so you might want to check that one out. But for now, anyway, that brings us to the end of this introduction then to the geometric distribution. And I hope you've been able to find it useful and that you'll go on to check out the other videos in this series where we'll be calculating 
further probabilities.